everyone trust that you're having a great day so far um, i want you to picture the situation with me you are driving down a dirt road you're on your own and it's wet it's muddy it's been raining and you see one particular patch of kind of water that you you know is risky to go through but you reckon you know what uh, you only live once so i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna go through this patch of water as fast as i can but unfortunately, just as you expected, the worst happens. And as you get into this puddle of water, you realize it was far deeper and far muddier than you made out to be. And you get yourself completely stuck. So you get out of your car to assess the damage and you realize that there is no way you are getting out. But then you remember that in the boot of your car, you have the following things. A rope, a crowbar and a pump. For your wheels. I want to give you 5-10 seconds to think about how you are going to get yourself out. You have a rope, a crowbar and a pump for your wheels. Well, I don't know, I don't know what you came up with in 5 seconds, probably not enough time, but I wonder how many of you considered something completely different. Phoning for help. I don't know about you, but I have no idea how to use a rope, a crowbar, and a pump for my wheels to get myself out of a situation like that. Now, today's devotion is, you guessed it, about learning how to get unstuck when we feel stuck in our relationship with God. And, and, and something that I've realized in my Christian life, and as I've spoken to various people who felt stuck in their relationship with God, is we are so quick to reach into the spiritual boot of our cars and grab whatever tools we can find to get ourselves out. We might reach into the spiritual boot of our car when we feel stuck in our relationship with God and pull out the tool of reading the Bible more or pull out the tool of going to church more or pull out the tool of whatever, you can fill in the blanks. But the point is this, when we get stuck, we so often just resort to our own efforts, things that we think we can do to get ourselves out. And those are not bad things. Those are good things. But I wonder how many of us, as our first reaction, as our first port of, port of call, go to God. When we get stuck, when we feel stuck, we call out to him to ask for help. Jesus says these words in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. You know it well. When you're burdened, when you're anxious, what does he say? Come, come to me and I will give you rest. Come to me when you feel stuck. I'm the one who can get you out. I'm the one with the answers. I'm the one where hope is found. Don't try and get yourself out. Don't resort to more Bible reading, more church attendance, more worship songs. Come to me. Cry out to me. Ask me for help. You see, in my own life, when I feel stuck, I'll be honest, my first temptation is to try and get myself out. The first way that I'll try and get myself out is just to try harder for God, just to do more. But you know what I realize is often I fail to do enough. I feel like I'm not doing enough. And you know what that does? It just breeds anxiety and guilt. And that just piles on to the anxiety and guilt I already feel for feeling stuck in my relationship with God. Secondly, if, if I'm realizing that I just can't do enough and now I'm feeling horrible about myself, I'll just run even further away from God. I'll escape to whatever behavior I need to, to numb the pain, the anxiety, the guilt that I feel for feeling dry in my relationship with God, for feeling like I'm a failure and I'm not doing enough. 
This may give me momentary relief. But then it just leaves me feeling even more guilty and even more anxious because now I know I'm really just avoiding God. But I'm slowly learning. I'm slowly learning that I don't need to let this feeling of stuckness go on in my life. In the moment that I feel stuck or dry or anxious or guilty or far from God, in that moment, Jesus is inviting me to come to him. I don't know why it is that we think we've got to wait weeks and weeks and weeks before we can come to God. It's like you feel stuck and the very thing that you can't do is to come and tell God all the anxiety and guilt that that are there which are causing you to feel stuck in the first place. I'm learning slowly that Jesus is inviting me to come to him as I am. And often when I go to him in those moments, I don't feel like it. I I don't feel like pouring out the reasons why I feel stuck. I don't feel like getting honest with God and telling him that I feel far from him. Telling him about guilt that I feel, sin that I've been doing. But in those moments, I remember that he is the only one who can get me out of my stuck position. So I make a choice in that moment and I choose to let it all out to him. And then, you know what I do? I choose to believe the truth in my situation. I get quiet for a few minutes and I allow God to bring to my mind truths that I need to hold on to and believe. Because 100% of the time that we feel stuck, we're believing lies. We fail to remember truth. We fail to remember who God says he is, that he's patient and kind, that he who started the work in us will finish it. We fail to remember truths about who he says we are, forgiven, loved by him, that he's with us, that we're with him. In those moments of stuckness, we need to stop relying on feelings and begin to believe truth that God is in control, that he'll get us out of this, but that we need to come to him as the first place, to come to him, to share with him the space that we're in. And more often than not, as I share my heart with God and I believe truth with him, I realize that I was never stuck in the first place. That stuckness was not a reality. There's no such thing as being stuck in your relationship with God because God keeps you moving forward and the door is always open. The invite is always there for me to come to him no matter how stuck and horrible I feel. And you know what he always says? Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming to me, choosing a relationship with me. I love you. I'm in control. Let's move forward together. You're not a slave to stuckness. Think about this analogy. You have a friend who lives far away. And you you feel disconnected from this friend because of the distance. What's the quickest way to feel connected to that friend again? Pick up the phone. Have a Zoom call. Connect with him. Dial in. Now this isn't a perfect analogy because God isn't light years away. He doesn't live in some faraway country. He's always with us. But the point I'm trying to make is, in any relationship, when there's disconnection, when you feel stuck, what does it take to feel unstuck again? What does it take to feel connected? Reaching out, dialing in, having conversation, sharing how you're doing, hearing how the other is doing. It's the same in our relationship with God. So if you are feeling stuck right now, this devotion could either be just another tool in the boot of your car, or you can take this principle and at the end of it, go and sit with God and just talk. Just tell him how you're feeling. Just pour out your heart and hear what he has to say to you. And I guarantee that he will remind you of truths in his word 
which tell you that you're loved and you're okay and there's grace for you and you're forgiven for your sin. And today is a new day. This moment is a new moment to move forward with God, to say no to certain behavior and to say yes to a relationship with him. I pray that this has been an encouragement to you, that you remember that Jesus is always inviting us to come to him no matter the space that we're in. Cool guys, I hope this is an encouragement to you. Love you lots and I hope you get to enjoy a relationship with God this week. God bless.